My dad came over to the UK to work at a textiles factory in the north of England. He wanted to do well for himself and his family and was incredibly hardworking. He passed away when we were 10 years old. Uh, he had a heart attack. And I think as I got older, I think his desires for us, uh, his ambitions very much became our ambitions. In the school, they didn't even talk about people going to university. I only found out about university when I was 28 and I started my own education journey. These things happened for me because I kind of looked around and said, what do I need to do to make things better? I grew up in Rotherham. My mum was born and bred in Sheffield and my dad um, came from Ireland as an immigrant when he was 16. Both of them left school early, my dad with no qualifications and because they didn't have the opportunity of education beyond secondary level, really gave us yeah, every encouragement to say, you, you can do whatever you want, you can be whoever you want. I'm from East London, not too far from here actually, and growing up was quite difficult. You're kind of exposed to three different avenues, right? It's either music, football, or unfortunately crime. I went down a football route. I signed a contract when I was 16. I decided that I didn't want to play football anymore and I wanted a different route that was going to be sort of long-term and sustainable. You know, I spent most of my life living in and around East London with people that were very much just like me. And so I never really noticed any difference. And then you join a professional firm where you're expected actually to take part in you know, client events and client dinners and things like that. And actually, it can feel quite alien. There has been times when I have doubted myself, particularly when you're around people that aren't from the same sort of academic background as you or, or social background as you, you. You ask yourself the question, why am I here? What am I doing here? One of the reasons I went through an interview process I was told subsequently was because there was a concern that clients might not take me seriously because of my accent. When you are a poor kid and you come from a poor background, those sorts of things do sort of stick in your mind. So in the first few weeks of my career in the city, I did, I did find it daunting. I had to deal with clients that were from a very different place that I had been from, people from very different backgrounds, and feeling really actually quite lost as to, to what to do. Yeah, I hadn't grown up in a home and an environment where people had to wear a suit to go to work. So I just didn't quite know what I was wearing and whether it was right or whether it was wrong. I do think that those are the sorts of things that actually do get in the way. You need to accept that you've got a diverse team and that not everyone is the same. It's your diversity and your difference that will help that business move forward and to attract wider, diverse talent. I didn't stop being the person that I am and having my background story you know, when I come through the door at 100 Bishop's Gate every day. I think a way of learning and sharing and getting to know people is showing a part of you that is more personal than just professional. Being a working mother, going to university, working in some very large organisations, making my way up the ladder, that journey and that experience needs to be shared. Seeing role models in the workplace stand up and, and talk about the journey that they've had has made me think about doing the same myself and encouraging those underneath me as well. Not every gesture or act of mentoring needs to be a grand statement. Small things can make a huge difference. You've got to talk about the fact that actually the skills we're looking for are around judgments and capabilities, not around particular backgrounds or particular experience. Corporates and institutions can help people like me. If you go to the estate I grew up in, there are so many people like me, but when you focus on a particular pool, then you miss out on the talent like myself that was in those environments. I would encourage anybody to speak out about their background because you never know what someone else is going to relate to or what's going to inspire somebody else. I'm Reggie Nelson and change starts together. I'm Ryan Grimes and change starts together. I'm Tracy McDermott and change starts together. I'm Deborah Das and change starts together. I'm Carol Fergus and change starts together.